Tom Brady. We're going to talk about all the stats, the seven Super Bowls leading the NFL in passing. There's a bazillion things that he's done. The epic season in 2007 with Randy Moss and Wes Walker and that whole offense that they had rolling. I mean, he's done it all. And when you play football for nearly in the NFL half of your life, like Tom Brady has, you're going to achieve a lot. And he's done it at a high level. He's compiled a lot of stats. But there's three things that I think that he has done outside of just statistics and winning Super Bowls and all the things that we can kind of measure. There's three things Tom Brady has done that I think are a little bit grander, deserve like a little bit more time to sit there and kind of talk about because it's not just in the numbers. It's some of the, the new precedents I think that he has begun to set. And so there's three things that I, I personally really enjoyed that I think he was able to do. Number one, and this is something that's going to help all quarterbacks. When we talk about, you know, Tom Brady playing, you know, until he's 45 years old, Drew Brees playing into his forties, you know, Ben getting into his upper thirties, maybe not quite as effective. You saw Drew kind of tail off at the end and we saw Peyton, you know, have some issues towards the end of his career. Tom Brady is leading the league as the leading passer in the NFL, his best season ever. Now he got an extra game, but he's still, over 5,000 yards passing for Tom Brady. And so what this does, when you're a guy like Aaron Rodgers, a guy like Russell Wilson, one day a guy like Pat Mahomes, maybe Josh Allen, you know, looking around the league, trying to see some more of these veteran quarterbacks, you know, that are potentially out there. And really, you know, Aaron Rodgers comes to mind because he's the guy in his upper 30s. But what Tom Brady did is he pushed the bar for quarterback play at advanced age. And there was a time where people thought you got to 40 years old. And I remember looking at Brett Favre and thinking, okay, this guy's on his way out. He's still playing good football, but eventually he's going to fall off that cliff like everybody does. You know, Tom Brady saw that cliff, jumped the cliff, and continued to jump multiple cliffs for three, four, five, six years. And so now you look at this, and I think teams will be able to evaluate and realize, and if you're a quarterback, it's great for you because it's going to expand, extend the expectation of your career. When you do that, teams will continue to build around you. But going to 45 now, Aaron Rodgers, like he's 38 typically in the past, you think, okay, guy in his upper 30s, going somewhere when you trade for him, ah, it's kind of his last hurrah. How many more years will he have left? Maybe two or three tops. Tom Brady's proven that you can do it longer. Now, that's not for everybody. It's a combination of him the TB12 and the green juice and genetics and everything else and being in good situations, but someone has done it. And I'm not talking about going in the way back machine with Steve DeBerg, you know, playing into his mid forties and being mostly a backup. This was a guy who was a starter, who was an elite player in the league well into his mid forties. It's going to be tough to replicate, but there's other guys out there that are more conscious conscious of their body than ever and they spend more money on it and russell wilson's throwing out these numbers of how much he spends and all these guys aaron Rodgers, you know with what they do and you look at it and you think okay if these guys are spending all this money taking care of their bodies in ways they never have before they're going to be able to defy the aging process and in doing that not everybody is going to be able to play at a high level past 40 but they're going to be guys that do it Defying the aging process, number one, and extending the life period and the expectation for quarterbacks, for teams to be able to continue to build, for guys to go somewhere else and have a second act. And it not just be, you know, Joe Montana at the end of his career with the Chiefs. You know, Tom could have left five, six years ago and had really almost a full career with another team had he chose to leave the Patriots. And so guys are going to now have that opportunity. Play 10 years with one team. You can go play eight years, nine years with someone else. If you take care of yourself and you do the right things and you got to have a little bit of luck with injuries and some luck with genetics, but Tom Brady has done that. He's moved the goalpost for what we thought a quarterback's career was and elongated that opportunity for the most important position that they're only going to continue to protect. The second thing he's done, and I don't want to use the term like defied the commissioner, but we all sit there and it's in the, it's in the rear view mirror. Heck it was, Seven years ago, it's 2022, happened back in 2015. Tom Brady, you know, the Deflate Gate saga, 
Everybody makes a big deal of it. The NFL suspends Tom Brady for deflating footballs for four games. And this is way in distant memory. Now, no one's even thinking about it. And to me, it's not, a, it's not a mark on his legacy at all. It's not a black spot. Tom Brady has proven that he can do it with anyone, anywhere, any point in time, in multiple decades. So I don't think there's a question, you know, of his ability and where, you know, deflating football is helping him throughout his career. But they came down on him as hard as they do guys who are, you know, tied up in, you know, off the field issues, drug suspensions, domestic violence, DUIs. They gave him a four game suspension, a quarter of the season in 2016. What did he go out and do? Patriots were able to tread water without him. Thanks to, you know, I think Jimmy G was even part of that, getting it done a little bit. They, they jellied those quarterback, that situation together, jo Jacoby Brissett, and found a way to make it work, and the Patriots nursed that thing along. And then Tom came in, lit the world on fire, ultimately goes and wins the Super Bowl. Believe that's the one where they come back 28-3 against Atlanta and just literally thumbed his nose at the NFL brass and said, you, you can do this to me all you want. It's not going to impact my play. Very few people, when they feel like they were wronged, can internalize it and produce at the way that Tom, level that Tom Brady did. And so he took the league, thumbed their nose at it, give me the four-game suspension. I don't deserve it. It was ridiculous, too, by the way, the fact that a guy would get four games for something as benign as that. I'm talking about the hiding of cell phones. And we've got all kinds of stuff now that are swirling in the league. And they're more concerned about that and about the footballs as if it was some massive advantage. And no one had really, in my knowledge, for my seven years in the league and talking to guys, like no one was ever super strict on it anyway. Four games, spins around, and with the help of his teammates, of course. Biggest comeback in Super Bowl history, answers the bell, hey, you're done, Raj. Don't worry about it. I got this from here. Hold my beer. And then the last thing, and I can't even remember when this was said, but it was some point in time, probably around then, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, six, somewhere in that window. Max Kellerman called for Tom Brady to become a bum in short order. And I love when guys have to ultimately eat their words. And Max, you know what? Hot take king, trying to throw it out there. Bum in short order. Tom Brady, the amazing thing was, is that he never once became a bum in his career. The guy was on fire and led a massive comeback. 27-3, ties the game up in the divisional round and ultimately loses on a field goal in a drive by Matt Stafford and Cooper Cup in Tampa Bay. Pretty remarkable stuff. Because usually when you say a guy is going to become a bum, you're eventually going to be right in sports. Age, injury, it all catches up with you. Never caught Tom. Walked out not quite like John Elway after, you know, a nice Super Bowl win, win back to back, but had a tremendous year. And if it wasn't, you know, the injuries, the Godwin, Antonio Brown blowing up and all, you know, uh, Tristan Wirfs, their left tackle, like all these different things swirled around to conspire against Tom. He might be playing still and playing in the Super Bowl next week, but he defied that. The bum in short order, short order, never became one, never put out a subpar product. And in his retirement and his letters, I can't commit to competing. I'm no longer going to commit to competing because that's what Tom Brady was all about. The commitment to competition. And so he's stepping off on that. Those are the three things. Defied age, extended the career expectancy for an entire generation of quarterbacks. Pat Mahomes, people probably look now, hey, he can easily play into his 40s. Look at what he's able to do with all the talent he has. May have to change his game a little bit. Won't be able to run quite as much, but he'll be able to do a lot of stuff. Defied the commissioner, took an unwarranted four-game suspension from deflate gate. Boom, answered the bell, won a Super Bowl, and then finally answered his, one of his biggest critics, one of the – and one of the biggest comments out there, the hot take, if you will, bum in short order, never became a bum. For that, Tom Brady, I thank you. Outside all the stats and the fact that you're one heck of a human being and everybody that plays with you knows that, you're insanely competitive, but thank you. That's the three things I think that 
I enjoyed the most outside of the numbers and the wins and loss, everything else that Tom Brady ultimately added to the NFL.